Your grandma might hate me for saying this, but traditional pumpkin pie kind of sucks. One, the crust is like heavy and thick and not flaky and light. There is no flavor in the crust, so it's just this vessel there for the pumpkin pie filling. And two, the pumpkin pie filling is, it's okay, it's nice, but it could be a lot nicer. So today I'm gonna be making a pumpkin miso tart with a black sesame crust. Really flavorful, the filling is light yet creamy, and it's kind of my elevated version of pumpkin pie. And then we're gonna make an apple crumble caramel ice cream pie, which is not traditional at all, but it is really fun and easy to make and super kid friendly. So if you've got kids, this is a great recipe to get them involved in the kitchen. Before we get to the recipes, I do want to thank So Delicious Dairy Free for sponsoring this video. If you are making a vegan Thanksgiving this year or would like to but need a little bit of help, they have so many great products for you to choose from. And in the description box below, you will find a link where you can find your own So Delicious products near you. All right, so for the pumpkin miso tart, I want the filling to be the best of both worlds. I want it to be light and not dense, but also creamy and rich because it's Thanksgiving and you wanna be eating indulgent food. So to achieve that without dairy, I'm gonna be using soaked raw cashews as well as this So Delicious organic coconut milk creamer. It's basically like half and half, but it is vegan, gluten-free, soy-free, and there's no added sugar all around, a great product. To make the crust, we'll start by blending up some walnuts in a food processor until they're finely ground. And then we'll add some crushed black sesame seeds to the crust. To crush them, you can use a mortar and pestle like I'm doing, or a coffee grinder or electric spice grinder. Add the crushed sesame seeds to the ground walnuts, and then we're going to go ahead and add some unsweetened cocoa powder, along with ground ginger for a bit of sweet heat, sea salt to balance out the sweetness, and some maple syrup. Blend together until the dough is slightly sticky. You wanna be able to press the dough together with your fingers. Then press the dough into the bottom and up the sides of a tart pan with a removable bottom. Use your fingers to get the crust into the fluted edges. And it can be helpful to use a flat bottom cup to smooth out the crust. Then pop the crust into the freezer while you make the filling. For the filling, we're making a homemade pumpkin puree. All you need to do is roast a whole pumpkin that's been cut in half, scoop out the flesh and pureed until it's really smooth and thick. Of course, if you wanna skip this step, you can just use store-bought canned pumpkin instead. The pumpkin pie filling starts with some raw cashews that have been soaked in boiling water for one hour or in cold water for eight hours. Blend them up in a food processor until they start to come together. And to that, we'll add the homemade pumpkin puree as well as the So Delicious coconut milk creamer. Pour that into the food processor along with some maple syrup to sweeten the filling as well as white miso paste, which is kind of the secret ingredient a homemade blend of pumpkin spices, a little bit of vanilla extract, sea salt, and some cornstarch or arrowroot powder to thicken the filling. And to enhance the pumpkin flavors, I'm adding orange zest and freshly squeezed orange juice. Blend that up until the filling is really creamy and smooth, and then pour it on top of the pie crust that's been chilling in the freezer. Smooth out the surface and then pop the tart in the oven at 350 degrees Fahrenheit for 45 to 50 minutes or until the filling is set. Once the tart is done baking, you wanna allow it to cool in the fridge for two hours before serving it. And when you're ready to eat, you can serve it as is, but I like to top it with the So Delicious Cocoa Whip, which is creamy yet fluffy and light. If you wanna get fancy, you can use a pastry bag to pipe it onto the pie, but to keep things simple, you can just slather on some of the spatula. All right, it's time to make the apple crumble caramel ice cream pie. We're gonna start by making the crust. It's kind of an oatmeal cookie crust. We'll bake it for a short period of time before adding the rest of the fillings. The filling starts with this so delicious caramel apple crumble frozen dessert. It's got these amazing chunks of like brown sugar and apples and cinnamon that are so addictive and you're gonna wanna eat those first. And it's also made of oat milk, so it's really creamy and rich, but of course it's still vegan and dairy free. And to complement these flavors, we're gonna pair it with some cinnamon maple apples. It's gonna be so good. For this apple crumble, ice cream pie, we're going to start by making our oatmeal cookie crust. You'll need some rolled oats, pecans, or you can use walnuts, sea salt, and cinnamon. And with the motor running, stream in some melted coconut oil as well as maple syrup for sweetness. Reserve about a half cup of the dough. We'll use that later for the crumbly topping and press the remaining dough into a nine inch pie pan or a tart pan. Bake the crust at 350 degrees Fahrenheit for 13 to 15 minutes until it's lightly golden. And now for the filling. You'll want to soften the So Delicious frozen dessert 
and then layer scoops of it onto the cool tart crust. You can do any arrangement of ice cream you like, but I think it's fun to do a circular pattern of scoops like this. Then place the ice cream pie in the freezer for at least two hours so it's completely set. For the rest of the pie filling, we're going to peel and dice some apples. I prefer a crisp and firm yet tender variety of apple like Pink Lady, Gala, or Granny Smith. Melt a bit of coconut oil in a skillet and then saute the chopped apples with some maple syrup and cinnamon for about 10 to 15 minutes. You want the apples to be soft and sticky, but not falling apart or mushy. Allow the apples to cool and set them aside until you're ready to assemble the pie. Once the ice cream is set and completely frozen, you'll spoon the cooled apples on top, getting into all those nooks and crannies, and use the reserved crust to sprinkle on the top as a crumble topping. The apple crumble ice cream pie is now ready to be devoured, but you can also finish it with a light drizzle of my homemade date caramel sauce if you'd like. You just need a tiny bit of it, and you can find the full recipe in the description box below. If you wanna wow your family and friends at Thanksgiving this year, I put together a helpful playlist on other holiday recipes for you to try. Hope to see you guys over there. Thanks to So Delicious for sponsoring this video, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Okay, bye.